Hey everyone, my name is Jennifer. I'm going to be hosting Tutorial Tuesdays and we will be uploading videos for demonstrations on how you do simple amigurumi basics and some techniques that are new to some people and maybe not new to you, but maybe you would like to see a different way to do it. We all do things differently and that is the best part about crocheting and even knitting and stuff like that. We all learn things differently, but hopefully we all are happy with what we accomplish at the end of the day. So I'll be showing you today how to do the magic ring, something that a lot of people can't stand how to do it and um, trips people up a lot because it can be confusing. Um, I think it's mostly confusing because there are so many different ways that you can do the magic ring. Um, my suggestion is that you maybe go through multiple videos and find what is the best way that works for you. Um, I'm going to show you my way and maybe it'll help click for you. Um, I know that when I first started out, I just, I couldn't get it. It made no sense to me, but when I finally figured out how to do it my own way, it just clicked. So hopefully this is what will help you. Um, basically you need any kind of yarn that you're gonna wanna work your project with. Let's just, if you wanna get some scrap yarn and start that way, you might wanna do that because sometimes you tend to rip things out if you get frustrated. I know I have done that before and your yarn gets really abused. So here we are, we're gonna start. Um, I hold my yarn in this way. I take my tail in my right hand and I thread it through so that it's overlapping my two middle fingers right here. And then I take it over my pointer finger so that the working yarn is in back of me. My tail is right here. And then after I do wrapping over my pointer finger, I actually wrap it all the way around my middle finger like that. And I hold it tight with my ring finger and my thumb. And this is how I start every project, even if it's just crocheting a scarf or a blanket or whatever, even if it's not in the round. So here we go. We're going to insert the hook underneath this little area. It's just a space, it's not even attached to anything really except for my fingers. I'm going to grab the yarn with my hook and I'm gonna pull up like this. So this in itself wouldn't hold anything. You wouldn't be able to do single crochets into this right here because it would just slip apart. So in order to fix that, we need to go ahead and chain one and now we've locked that in. It is not gonna slide out. And I have my little circle here that I can now insert all of my single crochets into. So let's go back to having it on our middle finger. Just a little bit of a loop there. Um, your tension is, just keep your tension however you keep your tension. But you want to make sure that obviously your single crochets are the same size so you're not fighting with them later if they're too small and too big. So let's go ahead and do our first single crochet. There it is, that's our first single crochet. And now every, um, most every amigurumi starts with uh, increments of six. Um, every so often you'll see smaller and it's because you're making a really small limb piece or an ear or things like that that require it to be smaller. But most of them start with an increment of six. So we're at four, let's see, five, and, oops, sorry, I'm getting tangled up here. All right, six. So, you it, so here you go, you've got six single crochets on this little loop here and they're secure. They're not going anywhere. But what we need to do is take this tail that we crocheted over. We had to make sure that we crocheted over this tail. We're gonna take it and we're gonna pull it. And you can hear it slide through. 
Now here's another thing about a magic ring. You will not close it completely. And I think that confuses people a lot too because you'll see a video and you're like, oh, well, it's a perfect circle. Why is mine not a perfect circle? Because you're not gonna get that perfect circle until you do your next round. That is why it doesn't always look like that. And it actually, like, it kind of looks like a U. I mean, you, you could see what I mean a little bit, a horseshoe. <laughs> so then another thing, you don't wanna pull this hole all the way tight because then you'll be fighting with getting your stitches in. On your second pass around, you can definitely pull your tail all the way tight and it will be, well, I'll show you how nice it'll look and clean. Okay, so now we're going to increase onto into our second row. We're gonna make our six stitch increase. So basically you wanna go from six single crochets to 12. So in order to do that, obviously you need to do two single crochets into each single crochet from the first round. So we'll start, here's our first single crochet and our second single crochet. Now here's something that I cannot stress enough to anybody who is first learning, even experienced people that have been doing this for years, you think, oh, I'm fine, I don't need one. You need one, a stitch marker. You have to have a stitch marker because when you're counting and you're doing a project that requires certain amount of increases and decreases, you can't lose track because then your project will get wonky. It might go the wrong way, it might look skinny and it needs to be fat, you know. You need any kind of stitch marker that you can think of. It can be a piece of thread, it can be a bobby pin like mine, it can be a safety pin, um, anything that's gonna mark your stitch. And you can even buy the ones that, you know, they sell at the store. Those, those are great too. I don't like them that much because they, they lock and I don't like something that locks. This is just easier to get in and out of my stitches quickly. So I mark my first single crochet right there because I don't want to lose that. And it also helps like if you are just having a really down day or night or whatever and you don't want to necessarily count all the way to 18 or 24, you can just do your increments. You can do single crochet two times and then four single crochets. I'll explain more about that later. So now we are on to our second single crochet that was in our first round and we're gonna go one, two. And now we're gonna do single two single crochets into each single crochet from the round before all the way around until we get to this stitch marker. Okay, so I've completed my round. I've done 12 single crochets all the way around and I'm at my stitch marker now so I know that I have 12 single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. This is what you see when you Google magic ring. You'll see the second pass around and that is why it looks like a ring. It looks like that now because we've done two rows, not just one row. And you're going to continue in that manner all the way around each time. And depending on your pattern, you're going to either increase your stitches on each row, you're going to stay at a certain number for a certain amount of rows, say, um, the pattern is asking you to do 10 rows of 18. So you'll just go 18 around each time. And whenever you do each row, please, for your own sanity, use your stitch marker. And if you have to, grab a piece of paper and mark each time that you have done a row. You can also, if you would like to Mark your first section, say you're at your, this is my first row of 10. 
So you can have two stitch markers, however many stitch markers you need in order to keep track for yourself so that you're not guessing, oh, where was my last increase or decrease? How many rows am I on? Because you don't want to have to frog all the way back to the last one that you remembered. That's very devastating and it can take a lot of time. So there we go with our magic ring. I hope that that made sense. And when you're done, you can always make sure that, you know, pull that tight and it closes up your ring really well. And it's a really pretty way to start. So it's a, it's a cleaner look. I feel like it's a cleaner look than um, chaining two and then chaining, you know, or whatever, chaining two and then going single crocheting into the second chain. I don't use that way anymore because I learned how to do the magic ring. And so that's how I always start my projects now. And that's going to be the end of this tutorial and we'll be back for more. Thanks.